Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this lamp, the whole process, including this really awesome little rig that has an IK controller and it controls these two pistons as well. And then you can rotate the lamp like this and you can also control the foot here. So just a really fun little thing to play around with. I've really enjoyed making this. Now I am gonna be doing the modeling a little bit arbitrary, so I'm not gonna give exact like measurements or anything, I'm just gonna eyeball things. It's just a little bit of fun and I don't have that much time to be too precise. So um, if this is a little bit complicated, maybe check out some of my other tutorials. And by the way, I am making this model available on my Patreon, which you guys can check in the description. And I'm also on Fiverr if any of you are interested in some of my gigs, you can also check that out. So let's get into this. I hope you guys enjoy and learn something. Okay, so if a new scene open up in Blender, we're gonna select all of the default objects. We're gonna hit X and delete. We're then gonna hit Shift A. We're gonna to go to Mesh Options, add in a circle. And with this circle selected, let's go into Edit Mode. And with all of the vertices selected, we're gonna go E to Extrude and S to Scale. We're only gonna go in this much. Then we're gonna deselect that Shift and Alt. Click on this outer edge here. It's gonna loop select these vertices. Then you're gonna go E to Extrude and Z to limit it to the Z axis, and you're gonna bring it up about this much. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and S to scale, and we're gonna bring this in quite small like this. Go to your front orthographic view and then go G, Z. So it's limited to the Z axis, and we're gonna bring it up about that much. Just like that. Then we're gonna come over here, Control R, double click to add it in a loop, cut, and we're gonna go Alt S, and just expand that out along the normal to Alt S, like that. I'm gonna tab out of edit mode, and we're gonna to come to our modifiers, give this guy a subdivision surface modifier, go to object and enable shades move. So let's just quickly go back into edit mode, and to tighten things up here, let's just go Control R, so hover over here with your mouse cursor, Control R, click, and you get the um, loop cut in here, we're gonna go double G, so GG, and just slide that along there. And then Control R, double click, double G, just slide. Just like that, so it tightens that up a bit. So now we have the bottom um, base plate here. So now let's go Shift A, we're gonna go once again to our mesh options, add in a cylinder. And with this cylinder here, we're gonna go S to scale that guy down. And we're gonna go to our front orthographic view, and you can see the scale we're dealing with here. So not too big, not too small, so just something like that. We're gonna go G and Z, bring this guy up to here just so it's sitting like in the middle, like that. Go to Object and Enable Shades Move. We're gonna to go to our Add Modifier, so let's just give this guy a bevel, or not a bevel modifier, but a um, edge split. So let's get the edge split. Uh, where is that guy? Here, edge split. Tab into Edit Mode, and then we're gonna go Shift and Alt, click on this edge here. So it's gonna select all of these vertices. We're gonna go Alt, I'm sorry, Control B or Command B, and that's gonna create a bevel. So let's just make a small one like that. So once we've done that, we're gonna, once again, we're gonna go um, Shift A, and let's just add in another cylinder, scale it down, and then G, Z, bring it up to about here, and then we're gonna go um, to our front orthographic view, and we're gonna go R, Y, 9, 0, and hit Enter. Sorry, not R, Y, we're gonna go R, X, 9, 0, and hit Enter. So now we've just rotated this guy 90 degrees on the X axis. So in your front orthographic view, if you hit one on your number pad, you should see this. We're then gonna go S to scale that guy, and you can hit Z, go into wireframe, and we want the width of this, the diameter here, to be as wide as this cylinder at the bottom. So we're gonna bring it right to there, and we can test to see if that's okay. So we're gonna bring it up a little bit, just to there like that, right? And then we're gonna to go to Object and enable Shade Smooth. We're gonna go Control A or Command A and we're gonna apply the rotation. Tab into Edit Mode and we're gonna go Control R, add in a loop cut and what we're gonna do is select this half, hit X and delete vertices. Go to Add Modifiers and let's add in a mirror. Enable the Y axis and get rid of the X and make sure to enable clipping. We're then going to give this guy an edge split modifier and then we're gonna go Shift, Alt, click on this edge here to loop select these vertices and we're gonna go Control B just to create a bevel like this. We're then gonna just go to our face select, select this face here and then go I to inset it. 
to about here and an E to extrude just a little bit. We'll get to back to this a little bit later. So let's just tab out of edit mode. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit free on our number pad to go into our right orthographic view. So you're gonna see over here, right orthographic view. And let's go shift A, we're gonna add in a cube. S to scale this guy down and then G to move it to your left. So we're gonna place it right here. So just like that. And then we're gonna go S, Y, oh sorry, S, X and scale it on the X just a bit. And then on the back in the right orthographic view, S, Y, scale it down on the Y a bit. Bring it in closer to here, uh, about here. You're gonna grab this guy here, tab into edit mode again. With that face selected, just go control plus or command plus to grow the selection. G, Y, and bring these faces forward. So it's touching right there. In fact, just grab this face here and just go S to scale it down a bit. Now tab out of edit mode, select this um, cube again, tab into edit mode. Go to face select and select this face over here. Go to your right orthographic view again. Zoom back a little bit and now we're gonna go G, Z and bring this guy up. And if you look at your grid here, we can see we have one grid space here and then an, another grid unit. So we're gonna just bring this guy a little bit higher. So about that much. As you can see here, tab out of edit mode. Let's give this guy a mirror modifier. Click on the little eyedropper and then we're gonna select this base plate here. Get rid of the X and enable Y. So it's mirroring along the Y. Now this is all good, but we wanna modify it a little bit. So what we're gonna do is tab back into edit mode. We're gonna come in here, control R. That's gonna add in a loop, call it double click, double G and just slide it up to about here. And then we're gonna to go to our face select, select this face over here and then we're gonna go G, Y. And we're gonna move that face in like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go E to extrude it up like that. So just something that looks like this. And if it's too tall for you, you can just select these faces at the top and just bring them down. So it's up to you. Um, just roughly a height like that will do. And just bring this face up a little bit. Just something like that. And we can come in here and adjust it in a little while. But in our right orthographic view again, we're gonna go Shift A and add in a cube again and then S to scale this guy down. G, Z, bring it up. Just so it's sitting right over here, like that. Then we're gonna go S, Y, and scale it down on the Y. Like that. And now what we're gonna do is tab into edit mode, go to our face select, select this face here, go to your front view, orthographic, and zoom back a bit. And we're gonna once again use this grid spacing here as a reference. So we're gonna go um, G, Z, and bring this guy up to about there. As you can see, so once again, you can use the grid spacing here as reference. Just like that. And then we're gonna go I to inset it. So hit I and then E to extrude up again, just like that. Tab out of edit mode and then we're gonna go control A and apply the scale. Let's give this guy a bevel modifier. And we're gonna, you can decrease the offset here if you want. So just bring down the offset, make sure you set the limit method to angle and then bring down the offset a bit and then increase the segment count. Just to round out those edges. Go to object and enable shade smooth. And we can grab this guy and just do the same thing. Give it a bevel, limit method should be angle. Also make sure to go control A and apply the scale. And let's just bring the offset amount down on this guy and increase the segment count. Object and shade smooth. So now that one has got a nice bevel so it's not as sharp. So now we're gonna go shift A, just add in. Okay, maybe first we'll just edit this guy. So we're gonna grab this guy here and we're gonna to go to our um, transform pivot here. I'm gonna make it um, active element. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go R45, sorry, R negative 45 in our front graphic view. And then we're gonna grab this guy here and we're gonna move it so it's sitting right here. And we can adjust it in a little while. So just roughly so it's sitting in the middle here, like that. Then we're gonna go R45 in our front orthographic view and hit enter. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit G just to move this guy. I'm gonna try and line up these two corners over here as much as possible. So just like that. So now they're both out of 45 to each other. And we're just gonna simply select this guy here, go to your front orthographic view, shift D, move it over here. Go into wireframe if it helps and just scale it down. And we just wanna place it 
so it's right in the middle of this edge here and this edge here. So just like that, you can eye it, it should be fine for something like this. And then go to your right orthographic view, tab into edit mode, just select all of these faces here, G, Y, and move them in. Uh, in fact, move them out a little bit maybe. And then what we can do, so I'm just experimenting a little bit here, maybe move them in like this, just so you have this guy sticking out here, just like that. Just something like that should be fine. We can mess around with it a little bit later. In fact, what I think I did with my original, I scaled the whole thing down. And then in edit mode, I just kind of brought all of these faces out like that. So up to you, it doesn't really matter, just right about there. And that's gonna be our pivot point for this guy here. And now we're gonna go Shift A, just go to our mesh options, add in a UV sphere. Go to object and enable shade smooth. S to scale this guy down and then G, Z, move it up. Go to your front view, orthographic view. And roughly with a scale of about this much, we're just gonna place this guy here, S to scale it down, maybe just a bit more. So just there. And this is gonna be kind of like the ball pivot point where our lamp is gonna be pivoting around. So with that guy done, we're now gonna make our lamp. So the easy way to do that is just to select the base plate, Shift D to duplicate, and then just move it up to here. And then we're gonna go in our front view, R minus nine zero and hit enter. And then we're gonna go G, move this guy over here just so it's in the middle of this ball here. And then we're gonna hit free to go into right or graphic view. And we're just gonna line this guy up. So that hole there sits in the middle of this lamp. And once again, I'm not being very precise. I think we can get away with it for this particular design. Now, once you have it kind of like in the middle of this ball joint here, we're gonna tab into edit mode of this guy. And then we're just gonna select this edge here. Control plus to grow to selection once, hit X and delete vertices. We're then gonna select this edge here. Then we're gonna go G, Y, so G, X. So hit G, X, move it forward a bit. And then S to scale it, sorry. Make the um, transform pivot here median point again. Then go S to scale it a bit. Just like that. And then we're gonna go um, E to extrude, S to scale. And then Alt S just to expand that out a little bit. And then we're gonna go E to extrude, S to scale and then G, X, move that guy in a bit, and then E to extrude, S to scale, just a little bit, and then E to extrude, S to scale, like that, and then we're gonna go E, X to extrude it in a bit, and then E, X one more time, S to scale it a bit, and then we're gonna go E to extrude, S to scale, just a little bit, and then we're gonna hit F to fill that face, and then we're gonna hit I just to insert it one more time, like that. Tab out of edit mode, and um, also you can just come at the back here and just select this loop at the back, S to scale that guy up, just so it's a bit bigger. And I think this guy's maybe a bit too big, so I'll just scale it down just a bit. So now you can see what our lamp is kind of looking like. So this guy is gonna be um, pivoting around that guy, like that. So it'll make more sense when we rig it. So this is pretty much kind of like the model lamp. So now we're gonna model this little piston part in here. And that's relatively easy. So we're just gonna grab this guy over here and we're gonna go into wireframe, shift D, and just move this guy so it's sitting in the middle of this guy here and this guy here, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this guy over here, go shift D to duplicate it and move it over here. And we want this little orange pivot point to kind of be in the center of this circle here. And we're gonna go, S just to scale down a bit, and then G, Z, move it up like this. And then I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and with these faces at the top selected, we're just gonna go G, Z, and move them up like that. And in fact, I think we might wanna just go into object mode and just scale this down just a bit. Tab back into edit mode, G, Z, just bring this guy up. Now we want this guy to kind of come to where the meeting point is between here, so we don't wanna go too high, not too low. So just kind of lining up with this nut over here. And then we're gonna just select this face here, go I to inset it a bit, and then E to extrude, Z, and just bring that down. Then go Shift D to duplicate that face, hit P and separate by selection. Tab out of edit mode and then just select this new face by itself, tab into edit mode. Select this face and then go E to extrude and Z to bring it up, up to about here. And then what we're gonna do, maybe a little bit lower, 
is we're gonna come over here, go Control R, add in a loop, double G to slide it up. Then in your front orthographic view, we're just gonna go to our face select, hit B to box select, and we're just gonna select all of these faces here at the front. We're then gonna go to our right orthographic view, and we're gonna go E to extrude it out to about here, and then we're gonna go S, Y, zero, and flatten those out. And go E to extrude them out one more time like this. Then we're gonna select these top faces here, and then E to extrude them up like this. And in fact, we're gonna make them a little bit higher. Just like that. So we should have something that looks like this. Tab out of edit mode. And this guy here is gonna pretty much be the piston that drives all of this, as you can probably figure it out. So what we could do to make this work a little, maybe a bit better, is just select all of these three over here. And let's just go G and maybe just move this guy down just a little bit to about here. And this is grab this guy here, go to edit mode and just move all of these faces to the top up a little bit, just so it's back in the middle point here. And let's just do the same thing with this piston. Let's just select all of these top faces here and go G, Z and just move them up. Like that, okay. Just moving up a bit more. Cool, we're getting there. So let's just select this cylinder down the bottom. We're gonna go Shift D, Z and just bring it up like this. S to scale it down like this and then get rid of that mirror modifier. Tab into edit mode and then we're gonna grab this face here and just go um, E to extrude it out like this and then E to extrude as to scale and then E to extrude it out a bit. Tab out of edit mode and let's just grab this guy here. Let's go back into edit mode and just select these top faces and just bring this plate up just a little bit. So now we have that, that's looking fantastic. So now we pretty much have our lamp done modeled. So let's grab this bottom plate. Let's give a new material here. And let's just call this um, plate one. And let's go down to our viewport display. I'm just gonna give it a viewport color, making it something kind of like a grayish kind of blue just for now. And then I'm gonna select this arm part here. And then I'm gonna select this arm part here and give that a new thing. I'm gonna call it plate two. And I'm gonna to go to my viewport display and just give it a viewport display color like that. Grab this arm here and give it that same plate two material. And then I'm gonna select um, the piston part here and give it that plate one material. And grab this guy here, give it that plate one. And then this guy here, I'll give it the plate one material as well. And this little joint here will give it the plate two material, like that. We'll also grab this piston part here, go new, and let's just call this metal. And let's just go over here to the viewport display and bring up the metallic slider. Just so it looks metallic. I'm gonna select this part here and give it that metal material, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is select the lamp part here, go new. Let's just call this plate free. And what we're gonna do here is just bring the roughness down in the viewport display. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode, select this face in here, go control plus to grow the selection. Hit the plus here, go new and assign that material. And let's call this light. Hit enter and make sure it's assigned. And just to see if it's assigned, let's just make it kind of yellowish. Tab out of edit mode. And now we can see that material is applied over there. Let's just grab this socket here and let's just give it that plate free material as well. So this is what we have so far. It's looking pretty good. Um, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna rig this guy and um, then I'll show you how to kind of mess around with the rig and then, um, yeah, we just mess around with the materials a little bit, maybe even set up some lights or something like that. But this is the model, modern lamp with the little piston. So just have a good look at it. It looks pretty cool. Okay, so before we can really get too much into the rigging, we're just gonna apply a few of the modifiers. So let's grab this guy over here. Let's just go to our modifiers and we're gonna apply the mirror and just apply the bevel. In fact, I don't think we even need to apply the bevel. That should be fine. So just leave the bevel. And then what we're gonna do is grab this guy here and we're just gonna um, apply the mirror. Don't really have to, but you can go ahead and do it. I'm gonna apply the mirror on this guy. Grab this guy here. Don't have to do anything with that. Um, should be fine. Um, so just this guy really with the mirror. Um, just gonna apply that. So let's start with our rig here. So in our front orthographic view, and obviously make sure you go shift S and just make sure your cursor is in your world origin here. So it's placed in the right position. Obviously, I think you guys should know that. 
hopefully. So we're gonna go Shift A, and we're gonna go down this time to our armature, and let's just add in a single bone, just keeping things simple. With this single bone selected, to be able to see what we're doing, let's just quickly go click on this little green dude down here, go over to your viewport display, and if you click in front, you will see the bone in front of your mesh geometry, no matter where you're looking from. So that's a little useful thing for you there. So with this bone selected, let's go and go to edit mode. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the top of this bone, this nub here. We're gonna go G, Z, and bring this bone down to here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this guy, we'll go Shift D, Z, and bring it up. We're gonna hit Z and go to wireframe. And what we simply wanna do is go G, Z, and just bring it up so the bottom triangular part of this here is in the middle here. And you can look at these two flat lines here as a reference. So just getting it roughly in the middle of the cylinder. If you hit free to go to your right orthographic view, you can see it's perfectly in the center. So let's just select this nub up here now, and in our front orthographic view, go G, and just move it up to here. And roughly get it in the center of this guy here. Now there are ways you can get it perfectly in the center and snap it there. Um, just gonna eye it, it should be fine for this. You won't notice anything. So just right there, like that, right in the middle. Once again, in our front orthographic, we're gonna go E to extrude that nub. And we're gonna bring this guy right in the middle of this sphere over here. So just eyeing it, it should be fine. You can see it's kind of like even all around. And then we're gonna go E, X, and extrude it out on the X like this. Grab this nub here and then E, Z to extrude it up. And this is gonna be our IK controller. So we need to select it. And then we're gonna go Alt and P. And we're gonna go Clear Parent. And then one more time, we're gonna go Alt P and we're gonna go Disconnect Bone. So this guy has no relationship with these bones, which is what we want, because it's gonna be our IK controller. And having it have any relationship with these bones here can really mess things up. So we don't want that. So what we're gonna do now is also just add in two little simple bones here. So let's just select this guy down here, actually. Go Shift D and just bring it over here. And once again, we're gonna make this bottom triangular part kind of just make sure it's sitting right in the middle of this guy here. And in your right orthographic view, it should be in the middle as well. So it should be fine there. So it's right in the middle here, as you can see. Look at the distance all around here. It should be, just eyeing it should be okay. Grab the top nub, go G, Z, and bring it up just a little bit. Doesn't really matter too much. Then we're gonna grab this guy, go Shift D to duplicate it, and go Z. Bring them up, and then we're gonna go R180, and hit enter. Okay, so it's kind of messed things up here, so let's just rotate it by hand. So just R to rotate it in the front view. And once it's rotated around, we're just gonna go S, X, and hit zero, and hit enter. And that's gonna make it perfectly flat along the X. Then we're gonna go G, Z, and we're gonna do the same thing here. We can see this cylinder back there. We wanna go G, Z, and bring it down. So this guy is right in the center here. So you can see this triangular tip here. We want that to be perfectly in the center of the cylinder. So just eye it like that. So you can see that's in the center there, that's fine. And with this bone selected, hold in shift and select the big bone over here. Go control P and go make parent keep offset. Then we're gonna grab this guy here, holding in shift, select the bone underneath it. Control P and keep offset. So now this guy, is a parent of this one, so it'll stick around. And this guy will stick, this little guy will stick to the big one up here. So that's now a parent-child relationship. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna also just select this big one, holding in shift, select the little one at the bottom, control P and go keep offset. So now this big one here is parented to this little one. So this little one, if we go into pose mode and grab this little one, you can see all of those bones are parented except the IK, which is what we want. Let's now, while we're in pose mode, which is where we wanna be, we're gonna select this bone here, and holding in shift, we're gonna select this bone down here. We're gonna go Control, Shift, and C, so Control, Shift, C, and then we're gonna go um, Damped Track, so Damped Track, and then we're gonna select this guy, and then holding in shift, select the one at the top. Then Control, Shift, C, and go Damped Track. So now this guy will look at this guy, and this guy will always be pointing at this guy, no matter where we move them. We're now gonna select this IK bone up here, and then holding in shift, we're gonna select this big bone here. Control, Shift, and C, and let's go inverse kinematic. Now, that is pretty good, but what we need to do is now select this bone that's yellow, and then we're gonna go over here to our Constraints tab, 
And what we want to do is we want to go to the chain length and increase it to two. And all that simply means is now this IK controller is going to be controlling one bone and then another bone down the chain. And essentially just with inverse kinematics, all it means is instead of having to come in here and individually rotate all of these bones piece by piece, we just have one simple controller that we can move around and all of these um, ones down the chain in the hierarchy will kind of just follow along. And then we have this guy here, which is just gonna be one that gives us individual control over this lamp rotation up here. So if we grab the IK here, we just move it, you can see that these two are now pointing at each other, like that. So now we can start parenting. So let's just quickly go into object mode and let's grab this guy here. So this bottom part here, then holding in shift, we're gonna select the rig. Then we're gonna go into pose mode. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this bone here, this big bone at the bottom, control P and we're gonna go bone. So we're gonna parent it to the bone. And then we're gonna go back into object mode and then select this arm up here, this guy. Holding in shift, we're gonna select the rig again and go into pose mode. Then select the big bone here and go control P and then go bone. So now if we select this IK controller and we go G, you can see that those two are moving along with it, which is really good. Um, so what we can also do um, is go back into pose mode. We're gonna select this little piston here and we're gonna hold in shift, select the rig again. So this guy here and holding in shift as well, select the cylinder down the bottom. So just these two, make sure you select them. Then holding in shift, select the armature. It's now active once again into pose mode. Then select this little bone and once again, control P and then go bone. And let's do it to this guy here. It's pretty much self-explanatory. So grab this guy here, holding in shift, select the rig, make it active, go into pose mode. Then select this bone up here, control P and then bone. So if you grab the IK now and you hit G just to move it around, you can see those guys are now moving around. So let's keep doing it. So we're gonna grab the different pieces, but to make it a little bit easier, I'm just gonna hit Z and go into wireframe for now. Select this piece here, then holding in shift, select the rig, go into pose mode. And we also wanna make this guy part of this. So grab this bone here, control P and then bone. So now that's also parented go back into object mode and you can just choose any of these pieces. So grab this guy here as well. Okay, we've already parented that one. So, um, so let's grab this guy now. So this guy down here and holding in shift as well, select the base plate. Then holding in shift, just select the rig, go into pose mode. And I think this is one of the last ones. So just select this little bone at the bottom, control P and then go bone. And then obviously we just wanna select the, go into object mode again select the lamp here and holding in shift, select the little ball socket thing. And then holding in shift, we wanna select the rig here, go into pose mode, and then select this guy at the very front here, go control P and then go bone. So now, hopefully, if we grab this IK controller in the front orthographic view, we go G, we can see we can now move that, which is good. Quickly go into pose mode and I just missed one little item here. If we just grab this little guy back here, holding and shift, select the rig. And obviously we wanna make that guy um, part of this one. So select this guy, control P and then go bone. So now that should all follow along. So yeah, that's looking really cool. Also, if these bones are in the way, just go back to the little green dude and just click in front. So untick that. And now you can no longer see the bones. If you do wanna see them, what you can always do is go and make this guy here B bones. Then go back into edit mode Hit A to select everything. Then you can go Control, Alt, and S, and just scale those down. So Control, Alt, and S, like that. Now we can go back to pose mode and things are a lot more organized. So now this is our IK control. So I'll quickly explain it. That's our IK control. This is our bone that we can rotate the lamp with here. And this is our main controller. If we grab it, everything goes along. So let's just quickly go back into pose mode. Just select this guy here, holding in shift, select the rig. This is go back into pose mode and then select this base one here, control P and then go bone. So if we move it, okay, that's now going along. Okay, so that's really good. So let's just quickly go back into object mode. We're gonna go shift A, just add in an empty quickly, a cube one, S, Z to scale it down into Z. 
And then we're just going to select our rig here, and then holding in shift, we're going to select the empty. Then we're going to go control P and then go object key transform. So now this is going to be our master control. So we can grab this guy in a viewport, rotate the lamp whichever way we want, and then we can grab these controllers here. But what we want to do is if we go into our right infographic view and I hit G, we don't want this to happen. So we're going to limit the rotation or the location of this bone here. So just hit N. That's going to bring up your properties panel. Go to item. And what we're going to do is we're going to lock. So hit these two padlocks for the Y and the Z. So in our front of graphic view, we can go like this. Um, so just checking here. Okay, so we want to um, just make sure we lock the Z. So we can go like this, go up and down, but on this local Z axis, it is restricted. So it can't go side to side like this. So we can go forward, back, up and down, but in our right view, we cannot go like this, which just makes things easier for us. Okay, so here we have the rig and we have the placeholder materials. So what we're gonna do next is just quickly add some basic materials, just set up a little scene with some lights. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, just quickly add in a plane and then go S to scale it up nice and big. We're gonna go Shift A, add in a camera. With that camera acti active, we're gonna hit zero to go into camera view and then G, hold in your middle mouse button and just zoom back like this. Go to your output settings. Let's make the Y resolution 1920. So it gives us a square aspect ratio. Hit G to kind of move it. And then go to your camera settings and let's give the focal length of something here like 95. And then we can just rotate our camera, hit the G to move it around and just get a view or a perspective that works for you. So I'm gonna go something like that. And then just grab the plane here to scale it up so I can't see the world background. So I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna go to my render settings, make sure it's EV. This is enable ambient occlusion and screen space reflections for now. And then we're gonna go shift A, just add in a area light. G, Z, move this guy up. And let's just go to our light settings, increase the size to about four meters, and then make the power 230. Hit the Z and then go into rendered view. Okay, so maybe more than 230 because it's quite a large scene. So bump it up to 380. And then we're gonna just go Shift D to duplicate the lamp. Bring it over here, hard to rotate it towards the lamp. And then Shift D, create one more over here and then rotate it in towards the lamp. Go to your camera view and you should see this. Go to your world settings and let's just make the color here a little bit lighter. So here we have it, our lighting. Let's just quickly go to our shading workspace. Once again, hit Z, go into rendered view, go into your camera view, and let's start with the base plate. So select the plate here, and with the plate one material, let's make it kind of like a bluish color, and bring the slider down so it's almost black. Bring the roughness down of it, and then increase the metallic value just a little bit. And then we're gonna select this guy here, the plate two material, let's make it almost black. Bring that roughness down a bit, and then bring that metallic slider up just a tiny bit. Then we're gonna select this piston material, the metal, and let's just make that fully metallic and then bring down the roughness a bit. So that's looking good. And then select the plate here. And if, the, um, if you go to materials tab with the plate free material selected, bring down this roughness just a bit and increase the metallic a little bit. Grab the light material. And what we wanna do here is get this principled node, hit X to delete it, shift A, search, and let's get an emission shader. And let's plug the emission into the surface here. Let's make it slightly yellow, and then bump the strength up to five. And if you go to your render settings here and you enable the bloom, you're gonna see this nice bloom effect here, which is really cool. And one more thing, select the floor, go new. Let's just call it floor. You could leave it white if you want, but I'm gonna make this guy darker, like this, and then make it slightly bluish, kind of purple almost. Bring down the roughness a bit, or bring it up actually, and just make it a little bit darker. And then give it a little bit of a metallic value, like that. So here we have the lamp. Um, you can mess around with the background, I might just make it a little less saturated like this. But yeah, this is pretty much the lamp over here. That's what it's looking like. And we now have a nice little rig. 
like I've already showed you. So if we just go back to our layout, you've got the rig here and you now have a nice little lamp that you can play with and the pistons will work as you can see there and you don't have to like do anything complicated to animate. Just one simple little control and you can just grab this guy here and just rotate the lamp around. So like that. So there we have it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and um, I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial. And once again, this model here with the rig and everything and the setup, it's all gonna be on my Patreon. You guys can check that out in the description below. And if you wanna hire me on Fiverr, you can check out in the description below. I offer some gigs that some of you might be interested in. So I'll see you guys next time and please stay safe and enjoy your week.